thank you for uh, all of you for coming to our uh, Infinum talks. Um, of course, many of you perhaps already know Infinum. We are in the offices here in Skopje, uh, but a short introduction is maybe in place. Uh, so Infinum is a digital agency uh, with almost 20 years of experience. Uh, we're building digital products, uh, mostly for web and mobile. Uh, and we have over 350 employees uh, in eight different uh, offices. One is, of course, here in Skopje, another in Zagreb, Podgorica, Ljubljana, and so on. Uh, my name is Anje. I'm a JavaScript developer at Infinum. I've been with the company for four years. I started out with React and then switched uh, my uh, preferred framework to Angular. Uh, and in the last four years, I've met from time to time, a few uh, accessibility features and a few projects that needed some additional love on that area. And today we are going to talk about web and QA uh, aspects of accessibility. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, at the beginning, I would like to just give you an introduction uh, to accessibility. Uh, I wanted to say that this is just a younger picture of me when I still had long hair, but of course this is Stella, uh, our, uh, one of our QA team leads. Uh, sadly, uh, she wasn't able to travel with us to Skopje, uh, but she did uh, prepare this presentation that I will take you through. So we will take a look at what is accessibility and what do we think about when we talk about accessibility and why does it matter? And briefly at the end, we will also discuss how we tackle it uh, here at Infinum. So first off, let's go very dry. What is accessibility by legal uh, definition, of course, taken from Wikipedia? Accessibility is the design of products, devices, services, vehicles, or environments as to be usable by people with disabilities. Or to go even more precise, from the UN Convention of the Rights for a Person, person with disabilities is a long-term physical, mental, intellectual or sensory impairments uh, which in interaction with various barriers may hinder full, full and effective participation in society on an equal basis with others. Mouthful. But uh, when we talk about uh, accessibility and about disabilities and people with disabilities, uh, we basically have two social models that we can take a look at that uh, from, from different vantage points. The first one, perhaps more common, is the medical model. The medical model uh, basically puts the individual with uh, disabilities uh, in conflict with its system, with, with their environment. And on the other hand, we have this social model that turns things on their head. And this is the part that we are interested in now when we're talking about accessibility features. And this, is, this tells us that an individual with some impairments, with some difficulties, uh, is basically positioned in an unjust social system that is not accommodating for the needs of all members of that society. And from that standpoint, accessibility comes into play. Uh, of course, today for us, uh, we are a software company, uh, we are software engineers here, um, we will talk about um, web pages mostly. But this accessibility is of course much wider topic and lately in the last few years it's coming in the forefront, uh, not only from, from this digital perspective, but also from hardware, from inventions that help people with disability uh, go around their everyday life a bit easier. Uh, even bigger companies uh, started involving uh, research uh, into, into, into accessibility. Here we just have two maybe bigger examples from Lancome, this uh, um, makeup company, cosmetic company that designed basically a handheld computerized makeup applicator for people with motoric disability so they can easily use their products. And on the other hand, we have uh, Sony's PlayStation Access controller, which allows people to use their controllers to play their games uh, in specifically the way that they need or want to. So we have like uh, external device that you can customize to suit your needs and to more easily interact with online community. So why does accessibility matters when we talk about digital products? We have three main points. One is the users, of course. This is for who we are making the product, for whom we are constructing these beautiful things that we do. 
And uh, WHO uh, estimates that in 2023, there are 1.3 billion people around the world, or 16% of world's population, that experience some sort of disability in, in last year. And as we will later see, disabilities have a very wide uh, spectrum and wide range uh, that can happen. And as you can see, one in six people basically that is using your product uh, could benefit from better accessibility features. Uh, there. The other one is, of course, the curb cut effect. Uh, this is a concept that uh, came up from a very simple um, invention, let's say. Basically, the cut curb to enter the curb. This was uh, created with people with disabilities in mind, so for easier access with, uh, with uh, 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 assisted devices. Uh, but this is now spread throughout the world. Everybody uses this curb cut. It is easy for bikers to enter the curb or uh, exit it. Of course, families with uh, trolleys, uh, people on the move, uh, uh, and travelers, and so on. Everybody uses them. And this, the curb cup effect uh, talks about that when you focus and invest in making a small portion of your community uh, be more included, to be more part of the community, to be more accepted, to make their lives easier, this is a great investment for the entire community because everybody can benefit from accessibility features. Uh, for instance, when we say accessibility, in this case, let's go with uh, auditory disabilities, we often start thinking in the end of the spectrum. Either the person hears perfectly or they are deaf. And this is not really the true reality uh, in all of the user base, and, uh, all the people that are inter we are interacting with. Of course, we then have this permanent, uh, permanent uh, disability. So let's say that the person cannot hear at all. Then we can have some temporary disabilities. Let's say that a person went through an ear infection and their hearing decreased for this shorter period. So in that shorter period where they are recovering, they could use your accessibility features. Or, of course, the most common one is situational. You can always find some good practices or good features that can help out people in the situational disability. For instance, in this case, a bartender, of course, a noisy environment, or perhaps maybe you found yourself on a public transport, you needed to watch some video to get some information, you forgot your, uh, your uh, headphones, and you wouldn't understand the video if you would play it then. So closed captioning of the video could be very useful in this situation. So we can talk about a wide range of uh, disability. Uh, and of course, throughout this range, different elements of accessibility feature features uh, can, be, can be useful. And the third thing, of course, laws and regulations. Um, the Web Content Accessibility Guidelines is the main um, set of rules uh, that is also used uh, in legal terms uh, to determine if a web application, in our case, is legally acceptable or not. So if it, if it is uh, legally uh, accessible or is it not. Uh, this is produced by World Wide Web Consortium, uh, this largest and most renowned body of uh, standardizing on the web. And uh, late last year, they published their 2.2 version. Uh, we have to keep in mind that their focus is, of course, on web. Uh, but also, uh, last July, I believe, they uh, published a draft of their 3.0 version, uh, which will also focus more on mobile applications. Um, these rules are very detailed. Uh, we will not discuss them today. Um, we simply do not have enough time. But it's important to know that uh, in its core, they separate in three uh, classes. So A, AA, or AAA, with AAA being the most uh, accessible. Um, and AA, the class AA, is determined by uh, most laws to be uh, enough to be for, for a digital product to be considered accessible. Now, in America, this Americans with Disabilities Act already states that all um, public and private sector uh, products need to be fully accessible by AA standard. Uh, in Europe, currently, we only, this only covers the public sector, so government sites, for, 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 for 
for instance. Uh, but uh, in 2025, this will extend to also include private sector as well. So this is why also accessibility is very important now when you're developing your products, because soon you will have to comply uh, by law, uh, by this regulation. And here at Infinum, uh, three years ago, we started our uh, accessibility initiative. Uh, for a long time, we were discussing accessibility and how to tackle it. Uh, but then we basically gathered all of our teams together. We, every team uh, sent their delegation uh, to the initiative and we basically um, started this cross-team uh, cooperation and structured everything as a project. And our goals were uh, to basically acquire all the knowledge that is necessary uh, for us to properly tackle accessibility, uh, try it out on a few of our current projects to gather some experience, and start knowledge sharing. Um, this resulted in a public handbook that you can visit uh, on our webpage, uh, where all of the knowledge that we acquired is kind of gathered. And this is uh, a living thing and will consistently grow as we grow. And of course, we wanted to start uh, holding uh, talks like this one. So we wanted to kickstart this community conversation. So after uh, all of our presenters uh, have their chance to speak, we will have, of course, Q&A section. Uh, you, you can feel free to uh, ask any questions then uh, or at the end, of course, when we mingle a bit. So before we go to our uh, guest speaker, Ms. Mirsada Bakic, maybe any questions about this legal stuff and what accessibility is? Okay, then uh, Ms. Mirsada, uh, thank you uh, for joining. Uh, she will tell us a bit about her life story, about her experience with accessibility and how to navigate the uh, online uh, world uh, using, using it. So Ms. Mirsada, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.